All right. Hi, everyone. This is lesson two uh, of the unit, the Black Freedom Struggle in the 20th century up to today. Uh, and lesson two is going to focus on the story of the Brotherhood of the Sleeping Car Porters. Uh, and we're going to use the story of the Brotherhood of the Sleeping Car Porters uh, to analyze what they can teach us about the ways in which uh, systems of oppression impacted Black communities and the ways in which Black folks fought back for their liberation. Uh, lessons two and three are going to focus on labor organizing, which is a key uh, form of resistance used prior to the civil rights movement uh, and helps us understand the role of economic freedom as a goal of the, of the civil rights movement and the Black freedom struggle. Uh, so the story of the Brotherhood of the Sleeping Car Porters uh, begins in 1925 in terms of the foundation of the union, uh, certainly goes back prior to that, however. Uh, there's a few, if you listen to the, the podcast, you will have a deeper understanding of this. Uh, so that's linked here in the lower left-hand corner. Uh, some of the conditions we want to understand when it comes to the story of the Brotherhood. Uh, first, the Pullman Company, named after George Pullman, the uh, owner of this uh, rail comp railroad passenger rail company, uh, was the largest employer of black men in the 1920s. So it's an important story to understand because it represents uh, a large impact on uh, uh, particularly black men. They hired black women as maids. Um, they just hired fewer of them relative to, to the black men they hired as porters. Porters were folks who did just what you're seeing in this, in this image, right? Waiting on the white clientele passengers, uh, carrying the luggage, that sort of thing, you know, making their beds, that sort of thing. Uh, and it was exclusively black folks who waited on white clientele. The reason for that was George Pullman was creating, again, this kind of plantation-like environment for white passengers, something we saw with the Cotton Club uh, in during the Harlem Renaissance. Uh, and so there's been, for a long time in this country, decades after slavery, a hearkening back to uh, the slavery era as a nostalgic era for particular groups of, of white people in this country. Uh, in, the porters had to work 400 hours in a month or 11,000 miles traveling in order to earn their full pay, which was at 817 a month. That would be the equivalent of $22,000 today or 30, 14 hour days. Yet they, and, and so poverty wages, but they also had to pay for their own lodging and, and food uh, out of that, that 817 a month. Uh, I would take a moment and pause in the video and maybe take a look at this, uh, uh, ad and to, uh, from Life Magazine to get a sense of the way in which Pullman Company tried to advertise their uh, their rail uh, passenger cars. Uh, so you can just see here with this, uh, with this uh, caption, did you ring, sir? And so, and the smiling uh, kind of black man always waiting on the white passengers is designed to right kind of use this racist caricature of an uncle tom or something like that uh to serve constantly be serving white people uh you see that in songs too uh the porters uh, uh on the pullman palace cars uh you can see in this line here oh we are two happy porters on the pullman palace cars we're never still a moment like little twinkling stars uh sort of, you know, the purpose here was to serve uh, and and make sure that, that white people were comfortable on this ride. So there was a degree of kind of humiliation. There was a, a degree of respect that came with the job because it was one of the more higher paying jobs for black men, but there was also a, a degree of humiliation um, with it as well. Uh, a. Philip Randolph, uh, we mentioned him in one of the previous videos, is an important uh, black socialist labor organizer figure uh, during the 20th century. Uh, he organizes and becomes the president of the Brotherhood of the Sleeping Car Porters. They demand pay raises. They want to abolish tipping. Think about it. Tipping is, uh, in the context of race and racialized, you know, uh, uh, interactions here uh, would often lead to black folks not being able to 
speak out on the racism they faced and, and uh, the, it was in many ways a degrading practice. And so to abolish tipping, to ensure that all their pay was wages or salary, uh, they wanted to get rest breaks, which they weren't afforded. They wanted to increase their pensions for retirement and they wanted name cards so that passengers called them by their actual names and not uh, just what they used to refer to them as, which was George, because George Pullman. So again, a pattern that harkens back to slavery. Uh, the organizing they did, the organizing of rallies and uh, meeting, trying to to get their union recognized by the brother or by the uh, Pullman Company, led to the Pullman Company, uh, you know, uh, trying to get the police to arrest them, firing workers. Uh, they strategically hired people uh, to be more compliant uh, after they fired porters who were. Mm, more assertive in their uh, in their organizing, uh, right? And so that that's a, a kind of an important story here, connecting back to our power and violence analysis. That when oppressed communities organize and use their collective power to win lasting change, they are often faced with uh, repression and coercive violence from the dominant group. In this case, represented by the Pullman Company. Uh, I would pause and take a message to take a moment to write in your notebook, uh, what is the message of this bulletin and how do you know that? Uh, you should be able to read the, the quote here uh, and, and take a look at, um, if you uh, open the slide separately, you'll see that there's a caption here called Crystallis. Uh, Crystallis would refer to kind of like the shedding of a cocoon, similar to how caterpillars become butterflies. So what is happening here? Notice uh, the visual uh, emphasis on this kind of crystallist figure of a black man who's begging with the guitar out on the streets uh, with a hat uh, and what is emerging from that um, a black man in a suit and so a phil randolph says right douglas fought for the abolition of chattel slavery and today we fight for economic freedom the time has passed when a grown-up black man should be a grown should beg a grown-up white man for anything so Demanding economic freedom, that's an important piece to a vision for Black liberation represented here, and the way in which they're trying to shed those humiliating practices uh, of that the porters had to face, and so asserting their power, and, and, and this was in 1927 at the beginning of the Union. Uh, why abolish tipping? Well, in many ways, tipping tips were often confiscated, or they had to pay a portion of their tips to uh, the poor and company, uh, which then would, you know, be paid out to the shareholders, the people who, you know, bought, who, who uh, owned a share of the Pullman company. Uh, so it's important, uh, you know, to recognize that there was economic exploitation happening uh, in the experience of, of, of Black porters. Um, here, I just put, posted some flyers, a special strike bulletin uh, to let folks know when they were going to take action, labor rallies. This highlights the methods used to achieve uh, fair wages and respect within their profession using ra rallies and strikes and things like that. Uh, here is an important piece of, of propaganda, propaganda not in the negative sense, but just in the sharing of information. Uh, for the purpose of persuasion, to persuade uh, members of the Brotherhood of the Sleeping Car and also just any porters uh, to not sign what were known as yellow dog contracts. These yellow dog contracts were contracts that companies would try and get their workers to sign saying they would not join an outside union. It's a form of economic exploitation. Unions are ways in which workers use their collective power to fight back uh, against companies that would try and exploit them. It's a way to uh, organize, use collective power, and win lasting changes in, in their, uh, with respect to economic freedoms and things like that. Uh, the Brotherhood achieves tremendous success. Uh, it takes 12 years, but they win their first contract. It takes 10 years before the Pullman recognizes the Brotherhood, another two years to win their contract, where they raise the minimum salary uh, for and they and they get it. The hours reduced to 240 hours a month, not 400, to, to earn their full salary. Uh, they are the first black union to, or first black led union to get a charter from the American Federation of Labor, which had excluded uh, black folks from their union for quite some time. Whoops. Uh, and eventually, they're so successful that eventually, uh, after 
uh, a little bit more time passes, they're able to win contracts that get their pay rate better than that of engineers and conductors, positions typically held by white folks at the time. Uh, there's a group of white Georges uh, who were mad that the black porters were being called George. And so they demanded that the uh, that they not be called George. This actually helps the porters get their demand for a name card met. Um, you know, not necessarily the means they wanted to do it, but certainly uh, uh, got the name card demand met. And they have a lot of important legacy for the civil rights movement. And people like E.D. Nixon, who were porters, uh, become leaders in the civil rights movement. Uh, a. Philip Randolph, uh, E.D. Nixon, uh, these folks. Uh, and they also exercise a lot of power in getting uh, FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, the president at the time in the 1940s to issue, uh, 30s and 40s to issue Executive Order 8802, uh, which, you know, banned racial discrimination in federal government and defense industries, which was one of the kind of early executive actions taken in support of uh, civil rights uh and whatnot. So the Brotherhood of the Sleeping Car Porters is a tremendously important story to understand the the ways in which Black workers fought for freedom, economic freedom in particular, uh, prior to the traditional civil rights movement that we're familiar with. So now we've we have this to add to our long list of ways in which Black folks resisted lynching, uh, you know, resisted racist caricature, and now we have right resisting economic exploitation. Uh, you can check out the Southern Tenant Farmers Union uh, video in Lesson 3.